Hello algebra students! In this class, in this video, we're going to be talking about transformations on the absolute value function. So, in a previous video, we learned what the absolute value function looked like and why it looked like. It, what is this? Um, right, it says phi, it's two lines, the slope of up one over one, up one over one. But we know functions aren't always as simple as this. So what I can do in my next one, in the orange, is see what happens if I add a number to the outside. So if I add a number to the outside, look what happens. It's kept the same shape, but shifted up three units. So all the y values, um, one was added to it. Conversely, if I subtract it, it would shift down three units. So that's actually always what's going to happen when you add or subtract to the outside of an absolute value function. Okay, so let's see if I transform. What if I added 3 on the inside? So even though I added 3 to the inside, to produce those same y values, it's going to shift to the left. So notice how now all the x values, so when I add to the inside, my x values are affected, and it moves to the left that way. See, if I made it plus 4, it would move to the right 4, plus 5, plus 6, that's how it's going to move, plus a half. Um, if I subtract, it's going to move to the right, that many units, however much I do. And you could even do both at the same time. So it moved to the right 6, even though it's minus, um, add it, and up 2. So you can actually take this h. Okay, then I can even add a slider and give it certain values. So if I made h, this number here, negative, let's say 4, it's going to move to the right 4 because it's minus 4. So let's say I subtract 5, down 5. Whatever these two values are, h will be the x value of the vertex and k will be the y value of the vertex. So you can actually tell what the vertex is based on um, but we know you, you're not always just adding and subtracting to functions. Sometimes you can do the operation of multiplication or division. If I multiply on the outside, you can notice this orange graph is skinnier than the green graph. This is a vertical stretch. Because what happened is I took all the y values of the function. So let's say I called this g. I should call this something else. If I took all the, the original function of f, and if I multiply on the outside by 3, and then take all the y values, all the f of x values, and triple them. So that's why it's so skinny. Um, if I were to multiply by a third, instead of multiplying by three, it's going to take all the y values and cut them into three pieces. So whereas before I had the point um, three, three, it's going to take the y value divided by three, and I'm going to have the point um, uh, three, one. It's not letting me how I, here I can type that in. Three comma one. And there it is. Now you're probably thinking, what happens if I multiply on the inside? Well, it's kind of strange. So this is actually a horizontal compression. So all the x it's not quite the same as if I did this. Oh wait, it is the same. Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um but what's, what's happening is I'm taking all the x values and actually multiplying by a fifth. So whereas before I had the point um, 5, 5, now on the new one, see how that's on the old one, that's on the original. I'm claiming I'm taking all the x values to produce the same y values. I'm multiplying the x values by a fifth. So that means I would have the point 1, 5. And so it is true. Um, if you were to multiply by a number less than 1 inside the absolute value, that's going to be a horizontal stretch. So when you work with the inside, it's kind of, I call it evil and opposite. Um, opposite things happen. So we saw vertical shifts up and down when you add to the outside, like a minus 2 or whatever. We saw horizontal shifts when you add to the inside. We saw vertical um, stretches when you multiply to the outside. 
Um, we saw vertical compressions when you multiply by a number less than one, horizontal stretches, and horizontal compressions. Thanks for watching this video.